Hello folks, nice to see you again. My name is Dustin Cormier and this is How to Rock Astrology. Today we are going to talk about an interesting combination. This is what it's like when you have Libra Moon with Cancer Venus, with Venus and Cancer. There's a few things to say about this combination. Ultimately, it is a difficult one. It is one of the more difficult combinations. <clears throat> Thankfully, the 10th house vibe doesn't necessarily, it's not an angle that is particularly damaging, but this Venus has to be starved by the moon, no matter what. And the moon's condition, if it's a malefic, uh, especially, or if it's just unhealthy in any way, if it doesn't have good shod baller or any sort of strength, no help from other benefics, Jupiter or its friends, Mercury, etc. If it if the moon doesn't have any of these things, uh, it's it's having difficulty by being in Libra as well. So, <clears throat> uh, especially if the moon is afflicted, Venus is going to get starved deeply by the moon, uh, <clears throat> and this is a really a difficulty for Venus. Because Venus, by being in Cancer, is in the sign of an enemy. That's the moon. Uh, there's actually an, a yoga going on, which is kind of interesting. There's going to be an interplay here between the emotions and one's business and social contracts. Uh, where one's emotions are ultimately going to ruin some of one's business and workaday contracts. Uh, and it might have something to do with damaging your emotional capacity, you, you know, the emotional reality that you apply to your work and career life, or ultimately how you work at your emotions uh, will be kind of s damaged in some way. Uh, mind you, Venus being in the 10th house from the moon, actually, Venus is a benefic. So Venus helps you understand your emotions here in some ways, and that's a good thing. But even though you understand, you're watching your emotions happen, your emotions, it's like you're a bird's eye view, watching yourself do the difficult things that cause you trouble. And what that is, is when your emotions, again, obstruct your business and social and marriage contracts and communication. So we're going to talk about that, about how the, the moon is debilitating to what the clarity one is supposed to apply to one's social interactions that are not supposed to be sentimental, not supposed to have any emotions involved. We're going to talk about that. <clears throat> but before we do, I'm going to start this off with a little intro that I've been doing for each of these videos. It's talking about the symbolism of the sun, the moon, and Venus. If the sun is the king, you guys might have watched my sun moon series where I talked about how the sun is the king of the chart. It's our innermost nature. And it's really the most important thing per se. But the moon is the queen. The queen kind of has the final say on what the king really can and does do. Although there's times where the king is just going to make the call and the queen's going to say, okay, this, you're the one who's applying our nature here. But the queen will say, honey, there's, you have to consider this. And whenever the queen says something that the, the king has to consider, the queen knows that it's something that the king needs in order to survive at his best. Uh, and that's what happens when we have a good moon, is that we listen to what we need in order to survive our best and longest. The moon is a crescent sliver of our sun's inner nature. It's our earthy subconscious whose sign, house, and aspects reveal the form that our sun energy has to subside through. So the moon and the sun are kind of like this classic husband and wife dynamic within us. Whatever gender you identify as, everybody has an anima and an animus. Every, everybody has a yin and the, a yang of their ajna chakra what they're doing with themselves and it manifests as a difference between what we do and what we build ourselves to be what we uh, you know that what our life purpose is the sun and who we are when we're not doing that life purpose you know the what's around us uh, so 
the husband, the son, is kind of like this husband who kind of just, he is what he is. And he is refined by his wife. The king, the son, is refined by his wife, the queen, the moon, who gives the son a rhythm and a healthy ceiling, a realistic ceiling for the son's potentials, a realistic human personality that the son can express through. At least this is when the moon is working properly and we're listening to it. Now, you know, consider, like, imagine that a husband, a husband looks at his wife and says, you know what, honey, you know what I'm feeling right now? I'm feeling like having a nice, big, delicious piece of blueberry pie. And the wife says, oh, well, yeah, you know, that's, uh, I, I know that you like pie, but remember, honey, remember what that does to your blood sugar. Now, the, the son, the king, could easily just have the piece of pie anyway, but they will eventually deteriorate. They will suffer because there's a part of the body of their real earth reality that, the, that they were not considering and that they ignored. And if you have an ill moon, you are going to run yourself ragged by not abiding by what people need on earth in order to adapt and survive on, on earth. That's what the moon does. So <clears throat> if we didn't think of it this way, if we didn't need to eat, if we didn't need to sleep, if we didn't need to have sex or enjoy friendship or enjoy the subjective meaning of our family and, and personal reality in life, then we could just infinitely express our son, infinitely work on our careers and our hobbies and our things that bring us outgoing joy. But that's not the case. We need to sleep. We need to eat. We need to drop what is it, whatever it is what we do with our job once in a while in order to live the n the night dimension the lunar dimension you know the sun is what we do in the afternoon but once it's all said and done 6 p.m. 7 p.m. we go home to our family we go home to our wife or our husband with our kids and their nature of the people that we hang out with is what is conveyed by the moon so this is the personality that we actually live through. And if anyone wants to get in touch with the king's personal quarters, they must do so through the queen, i.e. the moon inside of us. Venus is the sun's self-enjoyment style. Venus is how we express affection. It's the sun's outgoing desire. But whatever Venus attracts is subject to the subconscious reaction complex of the moon, no matter what. So, what does this mean in relation with our given sign combination today? Well, there's a few funky things to talk about here. Uh, Cancer Venus is really the big thing that we really need to talk about. Uh, <clears throat> see, there's an, a mu interesting mutual yoga happening here. Venus is in the moon's sign and the moon is in Venus's sign. So whatever these mean in your actual rising sign, you know, whatever lord, whatever houses Venus rules is going to be in a yoga with whatever house the moon rules as Cancer. Uh, and it's a for better or worse thing. Typically, the moon will drown and draw out the potentials given by the houses that Venus owns because Venus is starved by the moon by being in the sign of its enemy, the moon. So, and you know, just to, just to uh, give you a clue of where I'm at here, in Western astrology, we often consider that the, 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 that the planets don't have relationships with each other. You know, a trine is always a good thing, an opposition or a square is always a bad thing. But in Vedic astrology, aspects are either damaging or beneficial based on whether the planets interacting are friends to each other or whether they're inimical and whether they're enemies. <laughs> you know, it kind of makes sense. Like, if you are a positive person and, you know, like, you like to kind of be an upbeat sort of person, uh, it makes sense that you would be uplifted by other upbeat people and kind of dragged down by people who like to be kind of negative and sarcastic and cynical. 
In the same way, if you are a sarcastic, cynical person, you might vibe with better with another person who also has that seething, sort of sarcastic view of life. Somebody who's upbeat and buoyant and nice can probably be annoying to you and actually bring your nature down. So this is kind of what happens when a planet, two planets are enemies or friends. Now, the moon, <clears throat> as I've said in some of these videos, the moon damages Venus, but Venus doesn't damage the moon. We see this kind of thing happening in nature. You know, if you take an ice cube and put it outside in the sun, the sun is going to melt that ice cube. The ice cube is not going to cool down the sun. It's a one-way relationship. This is kind of like, you know, the moon is more primary and it, <clears throat> the moon is always more primary as an emotional item. And when Venus is in any aspect with the moon or when Venus is in Cancer, what happens is that what the moon, <clears throat> what Venus wants to do to enjoy itself is instinctively obscured by what the moon needs to do in order to survive. Uh, because the moon is always going to act on the instinct that it needs to in order to build security with itself and within its relationship. Now, it's an interesting combination because ultimately this moon here is not exactly afflicted, but there are signs of difficulty that come from the fact that the moon, by being in Libra, it's right next door to Scorpio where it's debilitated, right? <clears throat> and debilitation and exaltation, they work by proximity. So you're not out of the woods just by, because your moon isn't, you know, your moon's in Libra, it's not debilitated in Scorpio. Not quite. You are still have a little bit of, you're, you're close to this debilitation aspect. It's not, a, not exactly. You're in Libra's sign, and it's, a, it's a, a different sign than Scorpio, but you're still close to it. So what is, how does this manifest? What happens is that the moon in Libra is a social person who's kind of light and airy and really wants to f find their other find their partner they want to invest themselves you know they're looking to build security on investing emotional energy into another person or other close friends to them who will ultimately give the moon in libra the feeling of security the feeling like that they're being held and appreciated by the people who they do things for moon in libra is the type of person who you know, like you, you, you might be the type of person who like, like asks a person, like, what do you want for your birthday? What do you want for Christmas? Uh, it, you know, because you want to communicate it, although you want to know it, you want to be able to think about the person and think, hmm, you know, they don't have to tell me. I just know that they're into anime. They're into like Japanese animation. So I'm going to get this little manga book. And they love it. Moon and Libra loves it when the other person says, oh my God, how did you know that I would like this so much? The Moon and Libra says, I just had a feeling. So cute and charming. Uh, because that's how Moon and Libra likes to build security for itself to feel emotionally validated within itself and also in their relationship. Now, by being so close to Scorpio, the Moon and Libra actually can be a bit selfish with this intent ironically it's kind of a difficult thing to talk about but essentially how it works is that you know libra is neutral venus is neutral to the moon it's not delighted here so the moon while it's dis conveying and displaying this desire to be of service to people the moon in libra can become a little bit of a doormat and lose a bit of its own sense of boundaries and kind of have a deep need to serve but it's almost as if your emotional need to serve is eclipsing the service that you actually do like how actually palatable and enjoyable your need to serve is for your partner you know because your partner might sometimes say you know you might get worried that the two of you haven't done anything for a while or that you haven't given a gift to your partner you want to go on a date or something like that and maybe you'll even say like let's do it once a week no matter what, Friday night, we absolutely have to go on a date. And then something happens with your partner where they say, 
you know, like work is ha work has got a b beautiful opportunity for me. So I should stay late Friday night. Let's just do our date night another night. The moon in Libra will be rattled by that, especially with this Venus in Cancer. You'll feel a deep, like almost like a betrayal or like your the one thing that you did in your relationship, which is provide enjoyment to your partner, is slipping away in this moment. Which is ironic because your if your moon is benefic and it's got delight, then you actually, by having moon in Libra, you actually want your partner to, to have a good time and to be happy on their path in life. So if your moon is supported here in Libra, then you will have the sense to know it's okay. I have my emotions fulfilled elsewhere. Let's say Jupiter is trying to the moon, and so you enjoy doing whatever you do in your life so much that you don't need that emotional compulsive security as much. But for most Libra moons, what's going to happen is that you're going to feel crushed because how you develop security is by being of service in a consistent way and giving your partner a feeling of subjective bliss that comes from you. You don't care if they can build it on themselves. In fact, you hope that they don't, you hope that they're not too happy alone because then that gives them less opportunity to be served by you. But this is the ironic trouble with Moon in, in Libra is that your desire to be of that service comes first. And the, the Venus in Cancer in you doesn't know how to, it instinctively grabs for this kind of, you know, please let me be needed by you is what happens here. And the Venus being in the moon's, Libra moon's 10th house, thankfully, over time, your Venus is going to learn how much it ought to be of service to the partner, how much emotional sentiment needs to be applied constantly all the time uh you'll figure it out because that's what the 10th house position does it's a constant refining whenever anything is in the 10th position from anything it's refining the understanding and the consciousness integration of the thing that you're in the 10th that, that we're in the 10th house from so by venus being in the 10th house from the moon you te you technically will get better th at this over time but ultimately, what's going to probably happen to you for the most cases in your life is that you won't feel like you did enough to enjoy and to feel valued as a partner to your partner. Uh, and you'll want to do more. You'll want to serve them and you'll want to build up yourself by doing more for the partner. And it might not ever feel like it's enough. You'll always feel like you, like your desires, you almost don't even trust your own desire nature at some level because it's compulsive. Venus in Cancer has a compulsion. It's thirsty is the word to say. It's not actually starved. It's actually thirsty, which means when, when a planet is starved in a water sign like this combination, I should have said this right from the beginning, but it is what it is. When Venus is starved in a water sign, it's actually considered thirsty, which means it can still do what it needs to do as a partner, but internally, you will feel like you didn't do enough. Like you could have done more, like you could have given your partner more enjoyment, and that would have made you feel more valuable and more secure in your relationship. Because the moon in Libra, again, wants to feel its security through the enjoyment of sentimental moments of dating of just looking to each other's eyes watching a movie and something happens and you look at each other and it's like oh that's just like that one time where we were by the beach and we saw that thing and like all these sentimental cute things that secure the feeling that you two are soulmates in a certain way uh these things are all cute and nice and good and the venus and cancer wants them and you might find that there's a set, defined, limited reality of how many moments that you're allowed to physically get where you can get this enjoyment, where you can feel like you provided the subjective meaningfulness to your partner. And it's never enough. It might never ever feel like enough 
as your YouTube astrologer, I commend you to consider that you have to learn what is enough. And through the 10th house nature of this situation, you will, you will apply it constantly until eventually you'll, you'll figure it out. You know, this isn't the worst combination possible. Uh, at some level, it always might feel again, like it's not enough, but if you meditate and you abide by the reality that you're in, you trust coming from within yourself that you are valuable and if you develop if you take therapy and if you develop ways to find equilibrium through the internal moon nature in yourself ideally through meditation or yoga or something like this then you will develop the awareness that the emotions that you're experiencing are mechanical in nature they are an, a compulsion which your divine intelligence can see over top and watch it move by like clouds in front of the eternal sun within you. You'll understand that you are over compulsive about your emotions and you will do enough things for your partner in a secure way that Friday night where you hang out and give your partner that blissful feeling so you feel like you're providing that blissful experience. And when your partner can't because they got to go to work or something like that that day, You'll trust them. It's okay, honey. Don't worry. I'm fulfilled. I'll get you. I'll get you someday. I'll. We'll do. We'll do a double one next weekend. How about that, baby? Fine. Your husband or wife goes and stays at work, and you do your thing Friday night. You're feeling lonelier than you would typically because your hubby's not there. Those moments will happen. And if you're intelligent and smart, you won't ruin your relationship over that. You won't f emotionally compel your partner to cater to this need in you which is not actually that practical and is not serving your desire to be the blissful partner that you want to be if you want to really be a good partner for your partner you have to take account of your emotional compulsion once you do that you can apply this combination in the ways where you both get the deliciousness that you seek it might never feel like enough but you will get something remember the moon has to be able to adapt Nothing in this world perfectly gives you, any of us what we seek. But if you're adaptable enough and if your moon is good enough, you will extract the amrita, the nectar of what you seek from whatever circumstance that you're in. I hope that was helpful. That was very, very to the point. Now let's reel it back a little bit. We just talked at a very esoteric level. Now we're going to talk about just more about these signs as a romantic, fun way based on Erotic Astrology by Phyllis Vega. First thing we're going to talk about is the moon in Libra. How does the moon in Libra approach lovemaking in the bed, in the bedroom? For you, the moon in Libra, your approach to lovemaking is glamorous and alluring. You appreciate the intricate rituals of old-fashioned courtship, and you enjoy being wooed with finesse and sophistication. Uh, ultimately, I would say that really there's a deep desire in you for the person to have an emotional sentiment to it and to really be thinking about it and to even show, like, like Venus and Cancer is a sort of like I'm with you for life because we're soulmates kind of vibe, which is frustrating especially at first because you've got the moon in Libra, which means you're going to want to explore many different people before you get your partner that you want. This Venus is thirsty in Cancer, which means it's thirsty for the experience of what it wants, which is the soul companionship. And you have to be careful. It's, it kind of sucks, really, that in order for you to get an understanding of the type of person you want to be with, you have to have an experience of bonding with them but that means that you are going to bond with whoever you date in order to find out the type of person you want to be with and you'll be saying that you want to give your heart to somebody fully forever and that means you shouldn't do that when you're dating because you're looking you got you want to try the pie before you buy uh, especially Moon and Libra kind of wants to be able to do this before they find a person who practically 
you know moon it like libra needs to see practical shared values that are going to kind of stand the test of time venus and cancer just wants to give it up wants to give it up let's just get married let's just do the thing as soon as they get the feeling that the person is perfect which means that you ought to rein that in and explore bonding in the deep ways so that you can understand the, the, the person you're with will ultimately give you the type of emotional bonding and deep closeness and things that you ultimately seek. Because when your lover is coming to you, and you, as it says, we're, we, you enjoy being wooed with finesse and sophistication and old-fashioned courtship, all these things, you know? Taking the rose petals and driveling them up, up the staircase to the top of the stairs where there's a bottle of champagne waiting in the bathtub. Your lover knows that you like these things, and you want them to show this to you. This is what the moon in Libra wants. But for you, having Venus in Cancer, you also want there to be, like, what's really going to hit you deeply is when you see things that relate to pinning your trust and loyalty together. Whether that's, like, a, a card or something that, like, instigates the promise that we might have kids later or that we might get married at some point or that you are the best marriage partner that I could ever possibly have for this and this and this reason. This is what is going to light up the Venus and Cancer. Uh, and again, that can get drawn. You, you can be overly thirsty for those kinds of experiences where it's like, come on, baby, show me that we're secure and we're good. And, and your partner might be like, we've been married for 10 years. What, what, do I have to keep doing this? Like in a way, and they do. For you, Venus and Cancer, you could probably be married to somebody for 20 years and you're going to be still hoping that they're going to have those little Cupid, those little hearts, you know, making you making you a coffee with a little note on it that says, for my love, with a sweet little heart. You know, if you got to instigate that and tell your partner that you, they, you like that kind of thing, then do it. And hopefully they'll do it and you just try not to be too on the person's case about it, but communicate it as something that you want. You know, find a balance there. Sex and romance are intertwined in the moon and Libra person's mind, especially. And you prefer artful seduction to a carnal free-for-all. And this is really deeply true of this combination in particular. If you don't feel like there's a deep sentimental connection, you'll grow bitter about physical connections until the connection at the heart level is established. You'll probably even feel bitter and gross and kind of like you're being used uh, and you won't be satisfied by physical lovemaking until there's a deeper connection. A special night dedicated to love in a romantic setting with moonlight and whispered words of adoration serves as a genuine turn-on, and affectionate gestures and loving words draw out your passions and get your sexual juices flowing. This is something that is... Uh, that all Moon and Libra people are looking for. You know, they're lo this is the arena through which their comfort of bed make love love making in bed needs to happen. When you finally get there, it's going to be very Venus and Cancer, which is like very, especially with the Moon and Libra, it's going to be delicate and it's going to be very graceful and it's going to be loving, just like staring into the other person's eyes and just saying, oh my God, I can't believe that I'm with this person. Oh yes, give it to me, that kind of like energy. Um, but ultimately, the moon in Libra in you, before the Venus in Cancer comes with its big watery eyes and this sort of like all-encompassing, yes, I'm the one that you want to make love to, before all that, the scene has to be set and there has to be a displaying of like, you know, this is like date night. And you could be hang your partner could be hanging out with his buddies, drinking with his friends, but no, honey, it was important for me to spend tonight with you and to have a moment with you where the two of us can kindle the fire that's inside of our hearts and we're living for it. You are the center of my world, baby. This is the kind of the thing that Moon and Libra needs in order for not necessarily that you're my one forever, but that. There's nothing else that I want to be doing right now. That's what the moon in Libra wants, is for the partner to say, there's nothing else I would enjoy doing right now more than being with you on this date night. Venus in Li Moon in Libra is looking for enjoyment. Venus in Cancer is looking for commitment, devotion. Devotion is really the best word for what Venus in Cancer wants to give and wants to get. Moon in Libra just wants an organic feeling that I am being enjoyed by this person. 
that's why he took time to invest in me because I am enjoyable. That's a deep security for the moon and Libra person. So uh, we can talk about it in my own way for forever, but uh, now let's take a look at what Phyllis Vega gives us for the moon in Libra and Venus in Cancer. Although you may act as if romance is all fun and games, in matters of the heart, you play for keeps. You crave the kind of closeness that includes total cooperation. When things don't go as you'd hoped, like when you wanted to have date night but hubby is busy with something at work, you may feel resentful, but you rarely allow your anger to show. This is a good way that they put this. Instead, you bury your disappointment and try harder to achieve a happy union. It's not a good thing. Venus being starved in Cancer can kind of make you a bit mute when it comes to how you're supposed to be communicating and expressing things in love. If Venus has support from Saturn and Mercury, then it'll pu pull it out of you because support Mercury and Saturn are Venus's friends. So if they're aspecting this Venus, they will force you to pull out communication in a way that serves practical social needs and mutual realities. Uh, so, you know, not everybody will just bury this and, you know, internally, quietly be bitter and try to push harder to have a better relationship, but some of these people will. Instead of working harder internally, you should work smarter and just communicate what you're experiencing. Your ideal lover intuits your moods and his or her patience and tenderness unlocks your deeper passions in the bedroom where the ideal partner for you is somebody who just lets you be who you are there's no rush there's no hurry to go anywhere it's very zen in a way where there's nothing for us to do but to be here and to exist and enjoy and when you do that and you see that they're doing that they're chilling and they're allowing you to be patient because you could be moody and you can get frustrated and say, so I'm sorry, honey, is this okay? Is it okay that we took all this time? And a good partner for you will just put their hand on your heart. It's good. I got you. We're where we need to be right now. And then your unbridled desire and affection, once you've gotten all that through and the emotions and the I'm sorry's are through, then you're just locked eyes with that partner and you completely open up like a coconut like a ripened coconut so very juicy stuff uh i hope that was enjoyable for you guys let me know in the comments if you think that i'm on the right track with this i'd love to hear as we've got a community of astrology happening here let me know if you guys think that that was fulfilling and useful to you for now i'm dustin cormier this has been how to rock astrology i'll see you guys on the flip side and on whatever episode that i come out with next Thanks for watching.